Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Brandon Rosa, and welcome to episode 238 of the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. Every Monday, this podcast covers new game releases, the previous week's gaming news, and we all learn an Xbox-related fun fact together. The show is on YouTube and podcast services around the world, so please subscribe in your favorite and leave a review. Xboxin10.com, no numbers, is your quick source for links to all of our podcast destinations and social media profiles, which you can follow at Xboxin10. There were no big games out last week, but the games coming out this week include Deleted Cyber Invasion, Airy Combine 4, Cave Digger 2, Rava and the Phantom Library, Fig, Rough Justice 84, Stuffed, Vostick 2061, The Rumblefish Plus, Choo Choo Charles, Detective Stella Porter Case, Omnius Tales, The Forsaken Isle, Soko Winter, My Child Leben's Been Born Remastered, Paperman Adventure Delivered, 3 Minutes to 8, Nine Ball Pocket, Grey Down, Jinshin, Jack Dragon and the Stone of Peace, Jinshin, Pixel Strike 3D, Shmup Mania, Rail Break, Party Friends, and Word Sweep by Pogi. Now into last week's biggest news stories, and we have six to cover this week. Number one, Microsoft could offer free Xbox Game Pass in exchange for watching ads. Tom West at True Achievements writes, Xbox's Chief Financial Officer Tim Stewart has revealed that Microsoft could offer users in regions that aren't necessarily console first the chance to, quote, watch 30 seconds of an ad then get two hours of game streaming, end quote. Last month during the Wells Fargo TMT Summit, Stewart said Microsoft wants Xbox Game Pass on every screen, including competing platforms like PlayStation and Nintendo, something which Xbox boss Phil Spencer later denied. What looks to have been missed from the summit but spotted by Tweaktown is Stewart's comments about free access to Xbox Cloud Gaming. Quote, for models like Africa or India, Southeast Asia, maybe places that aren't console first, you can say, hey, do you want to watch 30 seconds of an ad then get two hours of game streaming? End quote, Stewart said. Quote, Africa is, you know, 50% of the population is 23 years old or younger with a growing disposable income base, all with cell phones and mobile devices, not a lot of high-end disposable income, generally speaking. So we go in with our business models and say there's millions and millions of gamers we would never have been able to address there, and now we can go in with our business models, end quote. Mobile games have been using ads for monetization for years now. With Microsoft's work on the Xbox Mobile Store, it makes sense that it has been considering similar ad-based models for its own services. Currently, Xbox Cloud Gaming is locked behind the premium Xbox Game Pass Ultimate tier, which costs $16.99 a month, which isn't an affordable subscription for many players, especially with rising living costs. As reported by Windows Central, Microsoft has already surveyed players about the possibility of watching ads in exchange for Game Pass time. Additionally, snippets of code from the Xbox OS found by the security researcher Title OS mentioned systems that could provide Xbox Game Pass access on an earned time basis via 15-minute blocks. Will this ever roll out in the United States? I don't think for a long time, but this would be very compelling for some of the other areas in the world to be issued. I would love as many offers and opportunities and ways Microsoft can enable people to play games through Xbox, so I'm all for this idea, as long as it doesn't overtake everything. Number 2, Minecraft Patch 1.20.60.23 finally adds 4K on Xbox Series X and S. Wesley Impool at IGN writes, Minecraft is finally playable in 4K on Xbox Series X and S after developer Mojang released a preview build of the upcoming 1.20.60.23 update. The update, out now in test form across Minecraft Bedrock Edition preview and beta on Xbox, Windows PC, Android, and iOS, also adds the Armadillo, winner of Minecraft 2023 Live's Mob Vote, and Wolf Armor. Fans have called for 4K support in Minecraft on Xbox for years, and while there isn't a full next-gen update out for the eternally popular sandbox phenomenon, the addition of 4K on Series X and S is certainly a start. Had like this because, like the article said, this is what people have wanted for years. Crazy at one of Microsoft's first parties and biggest previous acquisitions in Mojang, did not get that 4K shine on Minecraft. Granted, is this the game that really needs it? I'm sure the hardcore would tell you yes. Number 3. E3 is officially dead for good. Tom West at True Achievements writes, The Electronic Entertainment Expo, or E3, was once the biggest event on the calendar for the industry and gaming fans. But it looks like the rise of new competitors like Summer Game Fest, the loss of partners, and the disruptions caused by the pandemic have caught up with it. The Entertainment Software Association, ESA, has announced that it won't be attempting to revive E3 anymore. Quote, after more than two decades of hosting an event that has served as a central showcase for the U.S. and global video game industry, end quote, the ESA is bringing E3 to an end, the CEO and president of the ESA, Stanley Pierre-Louis, said via the Washington Post. Quote, we know the entire industry, players and creators alike, have a lot of passion for E3. We share that passion, end quote, Pierre-Louis said. Quote, we know it's difficult to say goodbye to such a beloved event, but it's the right thing to do given the new opportunities our industry has to reach fans and partners, end quote. 
While E3 was once an event with such a reach that the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Wii consoles were revealed during the same show in 2005, it has been a downward spiral in recent years, with the rise of online showcases like Nintendo Direct beginning to change how consumers get information about upcoming games, partners like Sony pulling out of the event, and more, E3 was already struggling to stay relevant in the rapidly changing industry. I don't need to give any more history or context, just had to highlight this. This is sad. I love football. I have my Super Bowl, but this was my video game Super Bowl every year for years. I always took off work, stocked up on booze, bought all the garbage food I could possibly eat, and did nothing but play games and live in that gaming industry world, and I will miss it forever. Number 4. Fallout 4 Next Gen Update Delayed to 2024 Was the Impool at IGN writes? The hotly anticipated Next Gen Update for Fallout 4 is delayed to an unannounced release date in 2024, but that's that has announced. Confirmation comes from the Fallout X Twitter account, which thanks fans for their patience. Quote, thank you for your patience with us as we work on the Fallout 4 Next Gen Update, end quote, the post reads. Quote, we know you're excited and so are we, but we need a bit more time and look forward to an exciting return to the Commonwealth in 2024. Bethesda announced the Fallout 4 next-gen update in 2023, with a release date set for some point in 2023. Given there are only a few weeks left of 2024, its delay to 2024 was expected. The update set for PC, PS5, Series X and S includes a performance mode that allows higher frame rates, a quality mode for 4K graphics, plus bug fixes and more Creation Club content. This is disappointing, but as the story noted, not surprising considering we were so close to the end of the year and they still did not say anything. I don't know what the big deal with this update is, it doesn't usually take developers this long, and like the story said it was announced in 2022. Seemingly now they're going to tie it into the Fallout 4 show, which is preparing in the spring, and it's something I can't wait for, so it'll be nice to have both of them together. That synergy they're all looking for. Number 5. Baldur's Gate 3 Xbox saves are disappearing, here's how to avoid it. Kenneth Shepard at Kotaku writes, Baldur's Gate 3 Shadow dropped on Xbox after winning Game of the Year at the Game Awards, and Larian Studios is already pushing out updates and hotfixes as the dust settles. If you're planning the fantasy epic on your Xbox, you may be at risk of losing your saves, and Larian is warning players to update their system to avoid the issue. Larian posted about the problem on its social media account, saying there's a rise of Xbox Baldur's Gate 3 players losing saves if the game crashes. The solution to this problem is on a system level, rather than just in any patch or hotfix Baldur's Gate 3 rolls out. So if you want to save yourself any potential heartache, you should update your Series X and S system software. While you may have this set to automatically download and install, Larian recommends manually installing the update through the settings menu and scrolling down to system. As this was the game of the year, I want to include this story as a warning for anyone starting it. Personally, I am not, as this game really isn't for me. If I wanted to include this story, make sure your console is updated, and I also hear be careful if you're using Quick Resume. So when you are done with the game, make sure you formally quit out of it when you come back in so you don't lose hours and hours of content in an RPG. That absolutely sucks. And number 6, Xbox Cloud Gaming is now available on MetaQuest's VR headsets. Tom Warren at The Verge writes, Xbox Cloud Gaming is arriving on Meta's range of VR headsets today. A beta version of the Cloud Gaming app is now available for the MetaQuest 2, 3, or Pro headsets. It allow you to stream hundreds of Xbox games with an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription, a controller, and a Quest headset. The beta app is available from the MetaQuest store and you'll simply need to pair a supported Bluetooth controller to start playing. You can use an Xbox controller that supports Bluetooth, a PS4 One, or even Nintendo Switch's Pro controllers. Support for PS5 controllers is coming in the future according to Meta. Really glad this is finally out and I can't wait to try it for myself. I did get a MetaQuest 3 and have been slowly going through Resident Evil 4 VR, as always with a little Beat Saber on the side. And I have messed around a few nights of just being on YouTube, laying back in bed, watching the major screen instead of my TV. So it's going to be cool to see how well this works on the thing. I will report back when I do so. As always, we end our show with a fun fact about Xbox, so let's do a little history fact into the original code name on the OG Xbox. Credit to Kai at facts.net. Xbox development's code name. During its development phase, the Xbox was known as, quote, Project Midway, end quote. However, when it was officially unveiled, it was given the name Xbox because it was seen as a shortened version of Direct Xbox, referencing Microsoft's DirectX graphics technology. It always helps to know a little bit about the history of our naming and where with the naming are they going to go next? What is the next Xbox project name? We don't know yet. But how are you going to follow up Series X and S? I've always been intrigued by that. Are we just going to go XS Plus? X Pro, what are we doing? It's going to be interesting to see with Xbox's next naming conventions in the next half generation and generation to come. Thank you all for listening to the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. If you like the show, please subscribe to your favorite podcast service, share with your friends, leave a review, and follow on all social media at Xbox in 10. 
This past week, I did finish up Control, which was awesome. Really enjoying my time going through Remedy's games, specifically Alan Wake and now this. I then played the first 10 minutes or so of Alan Wake 2, and for some reason, it just wasn't the right time. So I started messing around in Fortnite. Fortnite racing is pretty cool. Fortnite festival is kind of fun, but you really need the instruments. And then just been messing around in Warzone, rinsing, dying, rinsing, dying, rinsing, dying. Maybe I'll get a dub in there somewhere. My name is Brian Rose. You can follow me on Xbox or Rose 93. Hope you all have a great week. Stay safe and keep on gaming.